Hello, it's B. We're going into lockdown again and I'm very conscious that this will mean quite a bit of misery for the British population. Perhaps you are facing financial constraint or even ruin if you own your own small business. There may be a rise in lockdown deaths or mental health issues as a result of this lockdown certainly people are very concerned about the situation so what i've put together is a, a little podcast aiming to help people or to support people to get out of lockdown i'm calling it the your get out of lockdown card podcast so how are we going to play our get out of lockdown card We're going to use common law, which if you saw my first podcast, you will know is the living law of the men and women of the soil. And we're going to use what is known as a conditional letter of acceptance. A conditional letter of acceptance is a letter in which we respond to a claim by accepting it upon the provision of certain conditions. And in the case of this lockdown, the conditions that we are seeking are evidence, accountability and goodwill. So the letter is intended to be sent to Parliament or to your MP, preferably by registered post or if not by email. And I'm going to talk you through how to do this. So I'm going to begin with evidence. So I don't know about you, but I've heard a lot of speculation, projection, probability about the transmission rate of coronavirus or as it's sometimes called COVID-19 or as it's recently become known, SARS-CoV-2. You'll notice that the name keeps changing, which is really quite confusing for members of the public. And that is, to my view, a deliberate strategy. So what we're doing is we're going to write to our MP and the first thing we're going to ask of them as a condition of agreeing to the lockdown is some evidence and so I'm just going to read the first part of that letter to you dear whoever your MP is I'm writing to advise you of my conditional acceptance of the above proposed lockdown subject to the following provisos documented independent scientific evidence that the SARS-CoV-2 virus has been isolated and proved to actually exist documented independent scientific evidence that lockdown is the most effective method of eradicating the alleged virus SARS-CoV-2. Documented independent scientific evidence that within the United Kingdom, SARS-CoV-2 is a high consequence infectious disease, causing high numbers of fatalities across a range of age groups. Documented independent scientific evidence that the method of detecting transmission used within the United Kingdom is fit for purpose as a test for the alleged SARS-CoV-2, is able to isolate and detect SARS-CoV-2 only in each test subject, that the detection method is being used in alignment with its design purpose. And finally, documented scientific evidence that the NHS nationwide has been since March 2020 and still is in need of protection due to the overwhelming number of hospitalizations for the alleged SARS-CoV-2. Okay, in the second part of the letter, we're going to ask our MP or Parliament to be accountable for the decisions that they are making and the decisions that are powerfully affecting this nation. After all, they are public servants. I know that under the propaganda program that we begin experiencing almost from birth and certainly during our educational years, we are led to believe that we are the servants of the prime minister and the servants of the monarch. But the truth is that they are our servants. They are there to serve us and they are there to serve our best interests. So what I'm asking for in this second part of the letter is that these public servants are accountable for their actions. If they must put the country under this constraint, then please be accountable for your actions in a very real way. So I'm just going to read out that part of the letter. 
that you, as my Member of Parliament, together with all Members of Parliament who voted for this second lockdown from 5th of November, are prepared to take full accountability for your actions and prepared to compensate me, together with any member of this country, to a minimum of £50,000 and a maximum of £5 million from your own assets, not the privy purse or from the taxpayer, for any harm, loss or injury caused as a result of your decision to approve this lockdown. This notice of liability to be countersigned by a notary public and payment to be made within 30 days of proof of claim, with compound interest accruing at 25% per calendar month. Solicitor's fees for both parties paid from the member's assets. Said letter of liability to be made public throughout the United Kingdom. So the third part of the letter is a requesting or making it a condition of accepting the lockdown um, of the Member of Parliament or Parliament or and Parliament even um, showing a gesture of goodwill to the public. Now it can be said that, or at least it seems to me, that Parliament does not seem to be particularly suffering from the effects of lockdown. Certainly their wages are consistent and if I am correct they have actually had a pay rise whereas most of the members of this country are facing financial loss and in some cases financial ruin. So I'm looking in this letter of conditional letter of acceptance for a sign of good faith or goodwill from Parliament. So I'm just going to read that part of the letter out to you. That you, as my Member of Parliament, together with all Members of Parliament who voted for this second lockdown, as a gesture of goodwill, as a servant of the people, pledge to only receive 80% of your gross salary, including expenses, for the full term of this second lockdown, and donate the remaining 20% to your local food bank in order to support those detrimentally affected by this second lockdown. Said pledge to be countersigned by a notary public and made public across the United Kingdom and evidenced at the end of the second lockdown by the individual food banks to which individual members of Parliament donated. This also to be made public throughout the United Kingdom. So now we're going to sign the letter or, or end the letter with the final paragraph which I shall just read out. If I have not heard back from you within 30 days with the independent documented scientific evidence, notice of liability and pledge of goodwill, then I will consider the matter closed and the lockdown voided due to lack of evidence, lack of personal and parliamentary accountability and lack of goodwill in service to the people. Sent without prejudice and then signed with your first name and surname and underneath all rights reserved, non waived ever. If you are sending this to your MP, then remember to sign your name and surname in the, in the normal way, sloping upwards through all rights reserved, non-waived ever, just to ensure that at no time that those two bits of signage can be cut and paste, cut out. So the reason, you may say, well, why 30 days? Because the lockdown will be over by then. Well, that is to, under common law, we need to act with honour. What we're doing by giving them 30 days is giving them plenty of time to pull together the necessary documentation. And so that if at any point we are charged with being unfair, we have actually given members of parliament 30 days to act upon this letter. And what I'm asking each of you to do now, if your conscience or this, this letter resonates with you, is to follow through and send this to your MP, either by registered post or by email. Mine will be sent by registered post if the post offices are open tomorrow, uh, but only after the lockdown has been confirmed. If we can get as many people as possible to write to their MPs and to write to Parliament to ask them or to demand of them even that they start to evidence that we do have a pandemic, that SARS-CoV-2 or whatever name they're calling it at the present time does in fact exist, that the PCR test is fit for purpose, that they are willing to be accountable and to show goodwill to the people they serve. So if this letter resonates with you, I urge you to send it and to keep a copy 
And in the next slide, we're going to talk about how that benefits you and how to deal with government enforcement agencies. So you've seen that the letter is in four parts, the evidential side part, the accountability part and the goodwill gesture part and then the sign off. Please feel free if you if this uh, letter resonates with you to send all of the letter or part of the letter, the part that resonates with you most to your MP. The, the most important part is the evidence, of course, because, you know, we're talking about the law and the law needs evidence. So we are looking for some for absolute concrete evidence that a pandemic exists before we agree to go into or before we accept the invitation to go into lockdown. So what is the benefit for you? Well, once you've sent your letter off, you are then on the front foot and the parliament is being asked to respond with the evidence that you've requested. And until such time as they do to your satisfaction, you do not have to accept the invitation to go into lockdown. Now this, I realise, may bring you uh, face to face with government enforcement agents. So how can this letter help you? So if you're dealing with or if you're approached by a government enforcement agent to ask you why you're not locking down, why you're flaunting the rules, then what you can say to that enforcement agent is I'm dealing with the lockdown situation directly with Parliament and I do not need your support at this stage. Thank you. So effectively, you are disempowering the government enforcement agent because you have told them that you are dealing directly with Parliament. You do not need them to act as a mediary. You do not need them to act on your behalf or on the behalf of Parliament. Furthermore, you're under no obligation to show them the letter, to provide further information because your correspondence, your dealings with Parliament or with your MP are private. So my suggestion to you is at that stage to refuse to contract with them further. How do you do that? If they ask you for your details, you would say, am I obliged? Because if no crime has been committed, you're not obliged to give your contact details to anybody. You may say, no, I do not stand under your authority. That is a response to, do you understand? You might say, I do not consent. I do not wish to contract with you. I do not answer questions. And then again, as many times as necessary, you can repeat, as mentioned, I'm dealing with the lockdown guidelines directly with Parliament and I do not need your support at this stage. Thank you, officer. Always remember to remain pleasant, calm, never, never become belligerent or angry or show any of your frustration. Okay, so let's I suppose that you have told your government enforcement agent that you're dealing with parliament but he is persisting in detaining you or even intimidating you because he is charged with ensuring that you comply with the lockdown guidelines what can you do about this this is what i recommend you say again it's putting you on the front foot so before i read this out i just want to remind you that you are a sovereign man or woman of this land and that the government enforcement agent is a public servant who has taken an oath to protect the public, to protect the people. That's you. So they are not there to enforce the government mandate. They are there to serve and protect you. Here is a sentence that you might consider learning. I need to advise you that should you persist in detaining or intimidating me, I will take out a private prosecution against you personally as a man in which you will not have the weight of your office to support you and where you will be expected to pay your own costs and should my prosecution prove successful in that it is proved that you have now no lawful reason to detain or arrest me which is kidnap or intimidate me, you will also be required to pay my costs and to pay me compensation. Please understand that you are responsible for your actions under law. Now that may seem like quite a tough sentence, but again, it is letting the officer know that you are not prepared to be intimidated. I suggest you learn that sentence. It doesn't have to be said belligerently. In fact, it's best said calmly. 
but it is something it is something that you can use to make the officer think about their actions please remember that common law supersedes admiralty law statutes or legislation so you are quite within your rights to make a statement such as this so there you have it your conditional letter of acceptance in three parts I will be, as I said, sending all three parts to my Member of Parliament by registered post once lockdown is confirmed. Obviously, if it's not confirmed, then I won't be sending it. So just to reiterate what we're doing with a conditional letter of acceptance is following common law. And we are conditionally accepting lockdown on the proviso of certain information. And what we're looking for in this letter is actual evidence that a pandemic, that SARS-CoV-2 actually exists, the test exists, lockdown works, etc., etc. Then we are requesting accountability of our public servants and also a gesture of goodwill from our public servants, given that this does not seem, the lockdown does not really seem to be affecting them very much, certainly not financially, given that they've just had another pay rise. So what I'm requesting of people, if it resonates with you is to take the letter in all its parts or one or two or three of its parts but certainly the first part and send it to your MP. As I said the benefit to you is that once it's sent you are free to carry on about your business and to continue to open your business if you have a small business because you are directly dealing with Parliament about their invitation to lock down. Please remember that this is an invitation that this is a guideline and the police, the government enforcement agents know this. So I strongly urge you to get the letter sent, to get your lo get out of lockdown free card and get on with your life. There is just one other part, particularly if you have a small business that you uh, might like to, to follow through on. I certainly will be doing this. I don't have a small business, but I will be putting a sign out on my window so follow me through to the next side to find out what that's about under article 61 of the magna carta the men and women of the soil have a duty to enter into lawful descent if they feel that they are being governed unjustly or tyrannically and how we invoke this is to print out a notice of article 61 and put it in our shop windows or business windows if we own a small business or if we want to as a dweller in the land on our house window and this is a notice to government enforcement agents that we refuse to contract with them and the reason we refuse to contract with them is because we believe that we are being governed unjustly so i'm recommending that people put off a copy of article 61 of the magna carta and i'll put a link to it at the end of this podcast and place it in their business window or their their window as a notice that you understand what really is going on in this land at this time and that you are prepared to stand up and practice your duty of lawful dissent so there you have it, a proposed strategy, a proposed get out of lockdown free card by using a conditional letter of acceptance requiring the government to provide evidence, accountability and goodwill before you accept their invitation to go into lockdown and shut your business or stop seeing a family whatever the effect is for you i will be adding the letter the conditional letter as a link to this podcast plus the article 61 of the magna carta plus some evidence that we have pulled together around the actual lack of evidence of a pandemic for you to view to see if if you too can spot the amazing amount of probability possibility and projection that the government and their advice advisors seem to churn out regularly without actually giving us any real scientific independent documented evidence. I do apologise for the quality of this podcast. We have tried to put it together as quickly as possible so that you the people can have this strategy in your hands and act upon it if that is what you wish to do. All the best and I'll see you at the end of this next phase of the pantomime. Thank you.